Welcome back, listeners. So, uh, yeah, Allie, in segment one, we kind of reviewed, you know, the alfalfa, uh, the perennial crop impact of kind of the weather we went through. And um, now maybe rather than, than looking back, we'll maybe look forward here a little bit, uh, maybe back and forward here, I guess, based on the, the topics we'll cover. Um, so yesterday, Ali, we were doing um, a webinar with some of our team and um, and we had a few questions come in from the group about some things that have been taking place. And ahead of the snow, Ali, we had quite a bit of field activity going on. I know, um, well, it's kind of been going on for you know, maybe 10, 12 days, but we've seen a lot of anhydrous. Um, you know, if you drove around last Thursday, Friday, Saturday, there was a lot of floaters out there. And, and one of the, the big questions that came in was, um, I spread urea ahead of the snow and is there any reasons why I should be worried about that application? So I'm just gonna back up for one second because I do like your comment about the fact that there has been a lot of, or a decent amount of field work before we came into this window. And I think that's the positive of this all. I like the fact that guys have a nice stretch of that some of those fields ready, ready to go. So when they're when it's time to plant, they can get in the field, get that planter rolling, and not feel like the fertilizer spreader people are, are just kind of right on their tails. So I think that that's a positive. But if you look on the urea side of things, if you're spreading that urea ahead of snow, should you be worried? My take on that is in most cases, no, you should not be worried. Just from the fact as as long as you don't have a maybe an ice sheeting on that, or you still feel that that soil is at a level where it's gonna allow that water to actually penetrate on down into the ground versus being in more of a runoff type situation. I think that snow is gonna act just like a rain would in terms of getting that urea incorporated on down into the ground. Um, but like I mentioned, I mean, there are certain situations where that could potentially allow for runoff or some other things, but I would be curious to get uh, your take on that, Josh, just knowing that you do have a lot more acres that. Are predominantly covered with urea. Yeah, and and I'm not um, really concerned about it much at all. And and I think you you said it best. A, a lot of this, um, I think, a lot of that urea got you know some moisture, or even even if it was applied, it went through some cold nights where it might have froze a little bit and cycled through before the snow. And then you know the last thing you might worry about, well, what if we we have the snow and we have a extremely rapid melt and water is running. Um, you know, there can be some risk of that, but the thing about this one is we're kind of gradually warming up so slow. I, I don't think we're probably going to see um, just, you know, some of that, those big runoffs or, or you know, the waterways that are plumb full of water. Um, I think it's going to be kind of a gradual melt here as we warm up, you know, real gradually. And even yesterday it was cold, but the sun's got a lot of energy right now and the snow was shrinking and there wasn't a lot of water running. So I'm not too concerned. I think for the most part, all that urea is going to be um, extremely safe. Uh, coming out of this situation, um, and that's good. Um, so, so yeah, Ali, you mentioned too a lot of is um, a lot of work has been done, and that's actually kind of the the exciting part about it. And and now when we kind of get through this snow cycle, um, you know, we're probably going to be at a point where by no means is it late. We haven't lost the calendar yet. You know, sometimes you know we've had some tough springs here the last few years, but um, you know the way I look at it, we have a lot of acres that as soon as um, I guess the way I see it, as soon as the ground gets fit here, I think we're going to be good to go and. And Allie, as we're moving forward, um, you know, any considerations of soil temp, you know, things moving forward, you know, what's your kind of take on uh, as we come out of this, this weather situation, what's, uh, what's kind of going to be the, the strategy to, to get going here? Well, I think if we look back to last week, the soil temps were sitting in pretty good shape and we were even supportive in a lot of cases of folks maybe getting out and just planting a few acres, getting the gremlins out of the planter and just um, a very small percentage of their acres. But as we turn to this week, obviously those soil temps have dramatically dropped. But on that same token, if we look at the projected forecast, we've got a nice stretch of dry weather coming. So my take on that is as we get to that point where we've made those fertilizer applications, that field is, is finished and ready to plant. If your soil conditions are fit, I'm gonna be supportive of, of going out there and getting that seed in the ground. Um, as long as I, I project that these soil temps will continue to, to work themselves back up. We've got some nice um, sunshine going on out there as well. So again, just coming back at that seed bed that is prepped, I'm going to err on the side of uh, reaping the benefit of early planting versus maybe worrying, you know, too much about, about the soil temp within, within reason. But I would like to get your take on that because I know you've got some really nice, nice points on that. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to agree with everything you said there. And I think, um, you know, 
coming out of this weather and looking at the calendar where we're at it, it's I'm going to base everything on soil conditions now where, you know, soil temp, it's, you know, we, we debate this a lot. Um, you know, I've kind of, you know, look at this situation many ways. And um, I kind of learned years ago that if, if you worry about soil temp, um, that can be an emotional decision. What should we do not do in this far north, you know, waiting for 50 degree soil, no matter what can be a challenge. But I think moving forward, as long as the soil is fit, and, and, and this means like it's truly fit, you're not mudding it in, you're not sidewall smearing, you're getting the furrow closed. I'm probably not going to stress, stress out about some lows that might be in the upper 30s or other things like that. Um, we're we're going to be at a point where, um, yeah, I think we'll be in pretty good shape and hopefully the, the forecast holds up and gives us these windows. And, um, you know, we did have a, you know, maybe just a really, really small percentage of corn alley too from a couple of guys just practicing the planter that went in. And uh, that'll be kind of kind of fun to watch here the next few weeks too, I guess. Maybe not at the grower's expense, but it'll be interesting to watch it play out, you know, where we had a, a few little experiments go in and some practice days go out there. And uh, I think in that situation too, the snow is going to be our best friend. And my, my gut tells me it's probably going to come out of it just fine. But but we'll see. And uh, next week, Allie, um, hopefully we got some more news from the field. And uh, be sure to tune in next week. You've been listening to Today in Agronomy on KFILAM 1060. If you've missed part of the show or want to hear more, check out the show page at kfilradio.com or with the 103.1 KFIL app. Stay connected with Allie and Josh on Twitter. It's at Allie G. Wise, W-I-S-E, and at Josh Schaffner. Submit your questions for the show. Tune in next Wednesday for the next Today in Agronomy on KFIL AM 1060. We'll see you at 11 a.m.